Hi, I'm Jade and I'm a medical student in... Wait, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm Jade and I'm a junior doctor in the Seven Deanery. And in this video, I'm gonna go through some top tips for final year. Let's begin. So early on and for the bulk of the year, you wanna try saying yes to everything, especially things you don't like. Consider yourself an FY1 already and use your time on the wards to become familiar with basic clinical skills like venipuncture and cannulation. Don't be afraid to get stuck in with the ward round. Make friends with the junior doctors that you're working with. Do some pass med every day, even if it's just 10 questions and write the things that you get wrong down on a cheat sheet to look through closer to the exams. And as you get closer to the exam date, build up the number of questions you do every day. Keep up with your revision and try to aim to do some SAQ practice as well. For example, do some capsule questions if you have access to a capsule account. In the final year, your focus of revision should be testing yourself and recalling information rather than spending hours and hours reading textbooks. Base your learning on things you've seen on placement and also, of course, use Medflix. Get on top of your dops and tabs really early on and plan which tabs you'll do on which placements. Don't wait for the last minute for deanery and job research. The deadline for your FPAS application, including your deanery ranking, is actually in early November, so quite early on in final year. So you need to decide if you want to prioritize placements over location, if you prefer two years in the same hospital, if you'd rather be in a large teaching hospital, or you'd rather be in a DGH, if you wanna be at home, the place you train for familiarity, or somewhere else. Calculate your likely EPM score using the UK FPO calculator to work out the likelihood of you getting into different deaneries based on the EPM scores of the previous years. Rank all the deaneries based on preference and don't just rank the first few and then randomly rank the rest. Consider what rotations you definitely want based on any specialties you want to have a taste of before applying to specialty training after the foundation program. MediBuddy has a really cool free foundation job ranking tool once you're allocated to your deanery. You can also use a spreadsheet with a scoring system or do it the old fashioned way. Print out all the jobs, cut them into strips, lay them out and rank them. Also look into other options like the AFP or FPP and more information about these are found on the UK FPO website. There can be loads of perks for signing up, including teaching programs, free accommodation or a grant. Use online platforms like Twitter, Student Room or LinkedIn to speak with other applicants or current doctors in the deanery that you're interested in. What about closer to the exam time? Let's talk about the PSA first. Prepare for the PSA from a few months before and some resources that I'd recommend include past papers, the past the PSA book and the online BNF. Timing is key for this exam. Practice using the online BNF when you're prescribing on the ward and become familiar with different sections available to you like interactions and treatment summaries and get used to using control F to quickly get to sections like breastfeeding or patient carer advice. There are also some really good YouTube videos and PassMed also have a PSA section. Keep an eye out on social media as well because a lot of revision societies actually hold free online webinars for the PSA and advertise them on platforms like Facebook and Twitter. Now let's talk about the SJT. Start preparing for the SJT a few weeks before the SJT booking is in early November, soon after the FPAS application closes, and the exam itself can either be in December or January in Pearson View Centres, and they're just like your driving theory tests. The best way to prepare for the SJT is through making use of the practice papers on the UK FBO website, and then really taking your time to work through the answers and try to understand where you went wrong. At the time of writing this script, there's also a paper on the website with no answers on, but I'd advise you to do it anyway and compare your answers with your friends. Discussing things that you got wrong with peers is the best way to prepare for the SJT. 
Read through the GMC Good Medical Practice and the UK FP curriculum as the majority of the SJT questions are actually mapped from these domains. Personally, I didn't sign up to any courses and my friends who did the courses didn't really find that they added much to their revision. However, you can use some SJT specific question banks like PassMed if you'd like to practice some extra questions. Ensure you're familiar with key ideas, such as who you would escalate to in terms of hierarchy. So as an FY1, you'd escalate to your SHO first, for example. You should also know when to approach your educational supervisor or your clinical supervisor. Next, let's talk about written final exams. Personally, I can't recommend past medicine enough. Also do the MSCAA papers. They should be provided to you by your medical school. You can time yourself doing them and mark yourself really harshly and use them to guide your revision. From a few weeks or months before the finals exams, I'd recommend you choosing a specialty to do per day every day and then condense each specialty into a page or two to flick through just before the exams and aim to finish like a week and a half before so that you have about a week to go through important points and also a few days to take off before the exam so that you don't burn out. Try to cover the specialties that you're less comfortable with first so that you can dedicate more time to them and revisit them if needed without feeling pressed for time. Brainstorm important conditions and jot down what you remember before checking the textbooks like your past medicine textbook, the Oxford Clinical Handbook, the Rhesus Council guidelines and fill in the gaps in your knowledge in a different colour. If you find that there are some things that you just can't remember, for example, drug doses for the emergency drugs, then stick them up on the wall where you can see them regularly. Also, group study is really helpful. So working in groups and asking each other questions can help consolidate your knowledge. Ask your friends how they remember things that you forget a lot. Some of my friends and I made a lucky dip of all the topics that were in our curriculum and we took turns in picking a topic from the bowl and explaining them to each other. Then we could fill in each other's gaps and research bits we'd all forgotten. Next, let's talk about OSCEs. Start preparing for your OSCEs early. Become really fluent and comfortable in history taking. When you're on the wards, pretend that you're in an OSCE and time yourself. Go through the mark schemes for each station and come up with potential scenarios. Time yourself, look through local performers, for example, the sepsis protocol, and get used to using them. OSCE Stop and Geeky Medics are really helpful resources. Know what's available in your area like support groups and counselling. Practice breaking bad news with your friends. Also practice discussions around DNA CPR and doing A to E assessments, and make sure that they give you brutal and honest feedback. Spend a day close to exams in the clinical skills room to become familiar with the possible skills that you may have to demonstrate. It's also helpful to do this because it can help you become familiar with the equipment that's going to be used in your OSCEs because sometimes the equipment that you might be used to working on a placement in a different area may be different to the stuff that you might have in your OSCE. Become familiar with the possible documentation that could come up as well. Seek advice from doctors on the wards, especially for stations like Breaking Bad News and Difficult Conversations. They do this day in and day out, and they can provide you invaluable advice on how to structure your conversations and how to improve your consultation skills. Lastly, the day before your exams, make sure that you sleep well and take the day off to fully relax. Go have brunch, walk in the park. Don't look at your notes. Don't get caught up in pre-exam panic conversations standing outside the exam hall. It's not constructive and it will leave you feeling really anxious. Stay calm because no one expects you to know everything. Take breaks, don't stay up too late. And remember, you've been training for five years for this. You've got this. I wish you the best. Thanks for watching.